All right, so let's talk a bit about the major assignment. Interesting thing about this is that, and let me go to that a bit. Let me actually stop show for a second. Um, is that, you know, again, this kind of story is like, I'm not necessarily looking for a feature story. I'm not looking for really anything. Actually, this is really a story where you really got to like be like your own self manager. It's something I talk about all the time in digital media where you got to basically really kind of like think for yourself here and like come up with your own structure. Um, I may have said this in the past. I'm just want to change one thing. You can use an anecdotal lead if you want. Um, that's fine. Um, but, you know, I want to make sure that actually like people understand that this is not supposed to be like a research paper. Okay. This is still a news story. Um, I've seen a couple of examples that people have sent through um, where you felt like you needed to have, again, like a really long kind of like beginning or preamble to it. Um, just so you know, this is actually the week where you actually really start like developing rough drafts and like showing me that. I know I've been giving you guys assignments to do and, you know, you want to have the weather assignment rewrite done, but, you know, this is actually just the last week. So we really got to like get going on this. Okay. Um, and um, I mean, you gave me the ideas, you gave me a good ideas. Uh, I think I've approved everybody's idea. A couple of you just wanted to actually change. That's fine too, just as long as you get it done. I think might, right now it might be a little bit late to change at this point, you know, cause you got a week to do. But again, I'm not looking necessarily for a, like a major research paper here, okay? Um, not trying to make an example of anybody. And actually, I really appreciate the fact that this student actually sent me his rough draft early, um, but you know, one thing I want you guys again to avoid is the research paper ease, you know, that um, I tend to think, I mean, it's, this is a news story, okay? It's a news story, it's just longer, 800 to 1000 plus words, that's it. Okay, so basically it's twice as long as what you're typically be do doing. And again, don't forget that the weather assignment counts twice as much as the previous assignments did. And then this is gonna count four times as much. So you really gotta make sure that you, know, you get it right and you really want to make sure that you get it to me so I can see it. But um, but what you really got to do though is also remember that we're, we're, we're sticking with the same line here and that is that we're still writing news stories here. Um, like this story right here had an incredibly long beginning, okay? This, and again, this is just a rough draft that was sent to me a while ago, which I appreciate. And actually the second draft was much better, so. Um, this, this year, the summer class directors, this is actually a story about how essentially uh, the summer class changes, the summer class schedule changes like all the time or something like that. And, and it kind of throws people off kilter and that sort of thing. But, you know, this is actually, this actually is actually not like the data journalism assignment. This actually is essentially, I told them, a reaction story, okay? This, you know, if you really wanted, to, if I really wanted to, to, to drive you crazy, and have you hate going to Rutgers and everything, I would have you do like a full complete story where you would have to interview like administrators and officials and into all their decision-making and everything. But that would be like a really long story and require a lot of research that you don't have the time to do, okay? I'm sorry, you don't, okay? So what I'm actually looking for looking to do is actually just do a story that is very specific and that is specific is essentially the students reacting to this, the changes in the scheduling, okay? That's a good story and it can get a voice out there that is specific and also maybe get to the administration themselves. Um, ideally, I would like to maybe get some administration reaction to respond to the students in the story, but this is much more simple and much works much, much better within our time constraints just to work as a reaction story of students reacting to this, okay? Um, this year's summer classes for Rutgers students will not be as flexible as they were in private year. Well, first of all, that's actually a little bit of an opinionated stated, statement, statement there. Um, the change in how summer classes are being presented is, is because Rutgers has begun to open up the school since, it's kind of going into all this explanation about why they're doing it, which I don't really need. It's also coming, is that from the administration? I don't know. There's a lot of setup here. With the pandemic coming down, most students will be in person this year, the schedule, blah, blah, blah. the reaction from, now we finally get to the story. This is where the story is right here. Now, this is not an anecdotal lead, okay, that I'm looking for. An anecdotal lead would be, again, focusing on somebody's specific um, crisis involving the summer class scheduling. <laughs> but, you know, um, 
instead it's there's just a lot of setup about why the university is doing this but we're not getting to the really the story which is right here okay which is what i asked them to do the reaction from students to the release of summer classes schedule has been met with dissatisfaction a little bit of a passive voice statement most students i have oh that's another cardinal sin no no first person um just say many students or students believe it is better for summer class to be online and in person. It could be the first transition right there. Um, now we get into like another point, flexibility. There's just like tons of tons of setup before we even get to like an individual student, okay? And no, that's not how we're doing it. I mean, if you want, if you want to get to 800 words, you don't do it by padding. You don't do it by like just going to the whole explanation about how summer classes work. Um, this before we even get to a student. It's how many words? It's 176 words. So it's almost 200 words okay, before we even get to like a student. Okay. And this is actually about students and the reaction. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to get it to 800 words, just interview more students, you know, interview seven, eight, you know, and then you'll get their individual experiences. You know, that's all you just have, you have to get more substance as opposed to more style. Okay more reporting, that's all. And I, I said this to you guys, I think earlier in the semester, and that is again, like if you're ever do go into this field, you ever get asked the question, are you a better reporter than a writer? Okay, you always wanna say reporter because the substance is what, is what carries a day. That Gate to Lee story I showed you before was a feature story, very stylistic the whole thing, but he actually worked to get that information. There was substance in that story, it wasn't just style. He actually basically like not stalked, but basically like, you know, he couldn't interview Frank Sinatra, first of all. He had to basically interview everybody around him, you know. So that, that requires work. That means that means interviewing, getting people, getting information from people, as much information you can from people to paint pictures within the whole story, you know, to paint scenes, to paint, at the, to tell anecdotes, that sort of thing. And you just build that into a larger story, okay? Um. So then, you know, the rest of the story actually does deal with the students and the reactions, okay? Which is good, okay? Um, but it didn't need all that set up, okay? All right. Um, all right, let me get out of here. Um, so, anyway, um, let me like go to some of your ideas that you guys had um to show how this can be approached um those of you who live i guess china right now you actually a bunch of you actually uh, uh, talked about this accident i guess that had happened um and um involving a plane i guess it wasn't china i guess that's horrible i'm very sorry to hear that oh, and i'm on the wrong spot um and um and i just wanted to basically say that like that's a fine it's, it's horrible tragedy but i mean it's a good story to do but what i suggested was actually like just basically you know just sticking with the um you know maybe like the reaction or how the impact that the impact that this has had on on people okay um and um by the way in case you're wondering like why oh my god what happened there I had to change locations because the cord was over here and I was running out of battery. So, um, so here we go. Um, sorry about that. Boy, Instagram is running, right? All right. So, um, let me actually talk about that. Um, anyway, so there was this idea that had, had I actually approved a bunch of people, a bunch of you who lived in China that had this idea right about the plane crash. And I basically said that, okay, so again, like, you don't necessarily want to write about the plane crash happen. You want to get into maybe the nitty gritty of that an investigative piece, that sort of thing. You know, everything, everything about journalism, why, why am I, why am I asking people to like shy away from that? I mean, it's not like I'm trying to teach people how to be like shy away from storage or something. I'm trying to teach people how like to do things that they're able to do, to understand, first of all, the importance of like following instructions. The second of all is the importance of time management. And third of all is basically not overshooting or undershooting. Okay, basically knowing what you can do within the time frame allowed. Because one thing you're going to notice that if you do stick with journalism classes is that there's going to be a lot more about actual um, um, 
you know, again, self-management, coming up, coming up with your own ideas, you know. And when you come up with your own ideas, you got to be able to understand, well, you got to do what you can only do, okay? Um, this actually was from John Wynn. Um, my topic this, of this assignment is the air crash that happened on, Mar on March 23rd, 2022 in China. It caused, God, it's awful, 132 people died. God. There are thousands of airplanes that fly every day. It's important transportation, blah, blah, blah. So what I said was, uh, this can work, but you got to make this about today. What is the latest? Who is reacting? But really, it's about this. Who is reacting? Okay. So I, what I what I suggested to everybody was basically just this: that you should just 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 get reaction from people, people that basically like might feel personally affected by this. I mean, it's not been. Maybe I'm off kilter or something, but you know, I'm old enough to remember when like plane crashes like this, unfortunately, what happened seemed like every other month. And uh, you know, I like to think that you know air travel has actually improved a lot since then. And uh, I mean, a lot of people were afraid to go up in the sky, but now, I mean, you haven't really heard about this kind of thing and, and it does happen. It's like so shocking. Um, and um, so what I would like to see is like, and actually I'm just gonna use my little whiteboard here. Okay. Um, you know, basically you would have a lead that would basically address obviously the, the China plane crash, but it's not necessarily about, again, you think about the sliver of the, of the angle you got to go with here. It's not about the China plane crash itself, but, you know, maybe like you focus on one specific group. Maybe it's like people in whatever town are still um, feeling upset about, not still, but, um, are still shocked even, are still uh, the plane crash that killed, it's awful, 132 people in China. I mean, you're gonna submit this story on May 2nd, so we'll just say in March, okay? Um, I mean, something as simple as that, you know, um, just, I mean, I, I would, I would have to think that if there was something that happened, let's say, even in California, which is three thousand miles from me, there's a plane crash like that. I would, I, th I would think I could find eight people in New Jersey, which is three thousand miles away, who would still be upset about this because it happens so infrequently and it's so shocking and it kind of raises things. Quite, it raises questions, not just among like transportation officials or people like that, but, but you know, the people. The people want to know. And, and, Am I able to fly safely? You know, a lot of people are like worried now going up in the air because now they just got rid of the mask mandate, um, basically. And I'm not really sure what's going to happen with that because I guess the Biden administration here is going to try to reimpose it. But, um, you know, but, you know, a lot of people are just afraid to go up in the air because they're afraid of getting COVID. But to add, to add this, I mean, actually, I have to be honest with you. You might even be able to get eight people in New Jersey to react to this China crash because to hear about this happening ever is it's again when I like back in the 70s and 1980s it was so much more common which is horrible for that but happen now even anywhere is like wow you know I would probably react to that you know my God what's going on here what how did it happen you know um, so I mean so we're already dealing with the crisis in the skies of people like fearing about getting sick, but to also be worried about like maybe a plane actually like falling out of the sky, it's horrible. Um, something like that happened remember, around 9-11, it was actually a plane that crashed like probably a couple weeks after 9-11, I think it was, it, had, it crashed in the Rockaways of, in New York City, it was horrible. And again, that raised the whole question of, again, terrorism. So that's another thing that's obviously been on people's minds for a very long time. Is that, a, is that an issue? I don't know. Um, Obviously, this story probably would include some background, but not too much. You want to get people familiar with what happened, but you have to kind of make that as like a secondary information. It's more about the people reacting. So, so you know, I don't know. I'm just going to like John Brown. You know, you get maybe, or actually, I'm sorry. You get in transition. Say some people say they're worried about the safety of. Air travel. So again, it's all about the reaction and how what's it's going through people's minds right now. You know, so you yeah, you break this into transitions. Um, John Brown said 
he hasn't heard of a tragedy like this in a while. He's wondering if it's safe to fly anymore. And then maybe like into his own personal experience, you know, maybe Brown um, uses air travel for his job. Now he's thinking, I don't know, about using a car service or something or a bus. See, anecdotal information, see? And then what you do is just kind of pile these together. This is just like every other story we've been doing, right? It, just that it's longer. And we go one person at a time, you know? And then maybe a quote, you know? And then we use another transition. I mean, we use the one I just used, okay? Um, others say, um, you know, they already have to about the safety, their health safety, this would be in America, I guess, now that the mask mandate has been eliminated, at least for the time being, this just compounds the problem, they say. See another transition, right? And then you basically have Fred Jones said he's just, he can almost say something, he's just going to avoid planes altogether. Of course, you know, this could also be a mixed reaction story. You know, um, others say that while the incident was horrible, um, this, you know, you know, plane travel is still the safest kind of transportation. You know, and Peters said, um, you know, you know, she feels completely safe while in a plane. And then maybe like she'll put on a she'll put on a movie to relieve her jitters, you know. That's what helps me at least. I still feel that way, like in a plane. Okay. So you can see again, we're going in the whole same pattern, right? We've got lead transition. Okay. Kind of good. And quote. And then transition. Right. Anecdote. Oops. Okay. Voila. Right there. Okay. So it basically follows the same pattern we followed before. Okay. Now, again, if you wanted to do something like maybe an anecdotal lead, I mean, I would, I'm, I'm going to go back into the assignment, make sure that like, I think I had a line in there basically saying that like, no, you know, just straight leads. I'm, I'm going to change that. Okay. Um, but, you know, anecdotal lead would be fine if you want to do something like that. You want to just take like an anecdote, you take it, you know, from here, you would take it maybe from something you would normally put in the middle of the story, maybe put it at the top, you know. You know, and then basically, you know, and then you would have something like, you know, this would become a nut graph. Jones is among many still shocked at the plane crash. And it's made them rethink. Of course, there's about a couple of opinions here, but whatever. The whole transportation. Or whatever, or using the whole minute completion. Um, okay, so this would be like a so either Fred Jones said he's going to go, he's just going to avoid planes altogether. After the, and then you want to avoid a little context here. After the China plane, gosh, actually, I accidentally moved up a a. Uh, <laughs> A, uh, an anecdote here, I'm sorry, a transition. Um, 
he was already maybe a little, quite a little more. He was already worried going up in a plane, you know. You know, I get into all the description sweating as he holds the handles, the armrest as a plane takes off. Okay, so then you got these teases up here, and then you go into a nut graph. Okay. All right. All right. So that's that's that story. So again, we're kind of following the same pattern we've done before. Just you know, again, it's just longer. Just, if you want more, if you want more information, you interview more people. That's it. You know, or maybe you just get deeper information from people. You have them tell more of their story. Okay.